Good morning. As we record this, it's May the 4th, and if you're a Star Wars fan, as I think some of us are here, uh, I, the one who is absent, this is not Kevin, and you'll know who, not, who Susan is, but uh, Kevin's away. He's not celebrate. he didn't leave because May the 4th is like a special holiday in his family, but uh, he's the one who first in the, the staff chat was wishing us all May the 4th. May the 4th. Or, yeah, May the 4th be with you, yeah. Yeah, which is unofficially Star Wars Day. Talking about fake holidays and, yeah. and I know. Uh, exactly. whatever. It's, I know you love it though. It's, oh. it's nerdy <laughs> and some of us, my girls were up early this morning yeah. uh, to do Joella's hair yeah. in like Princess Leia side buns. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. we'll see if that's still in after school. They're uh, whatever. Yeah, oh, that's it's great. So. Ridiculous, but we're we're yeah. together to record copy So time. Cinco de Mayo for everybody that's watching this because that's when it's coming out, uh, the fifth of May. But uh, also Joella's birthday. So oh, Joella's happy birthday, birthday yeah. Joella. Yeah. So yeah. Princess Leia. Yes. Yeah, so. it's big big week in the Millers. Oh man, the Millers are just over the moon. And Mother's Day coming up. Yes. Just a heads up. Just, Sunday yes. is Mother's Day. Yep. If you're watching this <laughs> Sunday morning. <laughs> You're gonna be late. Let's <laughs> but you're probably your you're probably all wondering what is Sue doing replacing <laughs> Kevin? And I will tell you, uh, we are happy to have Sue. If you if you know Sue, you know she's awesome, and you just want to know her better. If you don't know Sue, you want to. So here's your opportunity to get to meet her. But um, Sue's gonna share with us uh, uh, an announcement in a little bit. But before we get to some of those. Uh, we always, I always like to reflect a little bit on the passage we've talked about this week because it, it's, it's always yeah, it's a good. Good, yeah. And this one's a really, I, I love this passage. So, um, one thing that's included in this passage is, is a lot of contrast. And, and Chris, you were just telling me some stuff that you saw that we didn't even yeah. talk a whole lot about on Sunday. Can you share that? Well, I bit? think, so I'm going to preface this by saying one of the things I love about having the conversations we do about the text is that um, we're all hearing the same thing, but we're not. And this happens all the time in preaching, right? I'll, after the service, I've had the experience of people coming up saying, thank you for that word. You know, it meant so much when you said this. And I go, I didn't say that. And I'll be like, oh, I'll even check the day. No, I never said that, but you heard that. And how does that happen? Yeah. Well, we all have the same Holy Spirit in all of us. Yeah. Uh, we don't always, you know, sometimes it's how, it's our interpretive lens, it's our experience coming mm -hmm. to scripture. It's God's spirit prompting us in different ways. We yeah. end up hearing different things. Mm -hmm. And that helps all of us uh, in the long run. So uh, I, when I was taking this passage, we were doing the same passage with the kids on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. what, what kind of was meaningful, I, I think, is that um, we have this contrast between faith and works. Um, in some ways, right? Because you got that temple leader who like, he's the guy who's working for God, he's maintaining the temple, he's, he's doing all these things. Mm -hmm. And sometimes as, as a father, I know I would, I wish it was if I'm a pastor and I show up at church and I tell my neighbors about, and I do, 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 then my kids will be set. Right. And my kids will be safe and they'll have no hardship because God will take care of them. Um, but this passage because, actually says the opposite. Yeah, because you're doing everything right. God well, should exactly. take care of you. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And God, God owes me, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. he doesn't. Right. Right? Right. And Jairus did all that work for mm -hmm. God, and Jesus still says you need to believe. Yeah. Believe that she will be healed. Jesus mm -hmm. didn't heal his daughter because of what he did in the temple. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't heal. He, he, he healed her mm -hmm. because... Jairus believed. Yeah. And that for me is really, it's the same with the woman, right? She wasn't healed because she touched, she healed because she had faith yeah. that Jesus could heal her. Mm -hmm. Not because she touched his robe. The touching the robe was an act of faith. Yeah. And I think that's the other side of it, right? Like when you think about that, I then had to go, well, then what does it mean to have faith? Because faith is an action. Like we, we don't, it's not just this idea that we hold on to, yeah. but we, we have to act on it or it's not real faith. Yeah. And so there's that tension there in scripture between what we do and what we, what we believe, which is the basis or the foundation of what we do. And um, without this becoming an hour and a half long discussion <laughs> about what is faith, uh, we, yeah. we, we see that both of these people had faith 
but that faith required they do something. Yep. And so for her, she went and found Jesus and touched his robe because she believed that that would lead to her mm -hmm. healing. He went, found Jesus, asked for his help, believed that Jesus could make a difference. Mm -hmm. That led to the healing. And so there's that, yeah. that comparison that works isn't the thing, but it's also the way faith plays out in mm -hmm. action. That's just such an important part of this passage. That was really good. And as I understand, yeah. was not part of the sermon. Yeah. So, no, I'm good. Yeah. Uh, Didn't come out the way you expressed it. So that's why we, this, these discussions about in the life groups yeah. here, uh, any, if you're talking about the scripture, is so good for helping. Sue, you noticed something different um, from, from the, the passage as well. So I did. So um, I guess the way what I noticed, and I, you know, I realize this part isn't actually in scripture, but Jeff, you talked about, um, you know, the time that it took maybe for Jairus just pondering whether he should go for help. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, maybe the way you just brought it out, mm -hmm. and we don't really know that for sure. But yeah. um, you know, I thought about that. You know, with Jairus, you know, maybe maybe his daughter was sick for a few days, maybe a night. Who knows? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, he did go and ask for help. But then, you know, I thought about, you know, the woman who's been struggling for 12 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and again, we don't know how long Jesus has been on the scene, so we don't mm -hmm. know um, how long she's, if she's heard about him. But, but I just, you know, just kind of thought about that. How do we, you know, do we wait? Mm -hmm. You know, do we yeah. um, wait to ask Jesus for mm -hmm. help? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, sometimes, you know, you're, you know, talking to friends and you say, oh, there's this thing going on and and they'll be giving advice and, well, wait a minute, I didn't ask God about this yet. So, yeah. you know, we need to be, mm, yeah. you know, God is our first and foremost, yeah. right? So I guess that's where I went with it. So. That's really good. Like, I've been challenged with that personally too. Like, how often do I try to figure things out before praying? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. why don't I, why don't I come to God first? Yeah. God, this is something I'm dealing with. And yeah, yeah that's so yeah. good, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just love this passage. I mean, the, just the contrasts, like you talked about a contrast, um, the contrast between uh, this man of high standing and this woman that's unnamed and low, you know, yeah. no no power, power. But both risked a lot and they in both going risked. to Jesus, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. Like it was not, right. and, he, and I think that's why it's so reasonable to think that they might have put it off because, mm -hmm. or delayed because, yeah. For her, just going out in public yeah. in, in her condition, yeah. not only would, like, could you imagine carrying the shame of basically infecting, for lack of a better word, right? Because mm -hmm. all of the community right. would be, you just made us unclean, yeah. so now we can't go worship God. Thanks a lot, lady. Yeah. Uh, right. Right? right? No one wants to be that yeah. person. Yeah. I mean, right? Nobody wants to be the super spreader. And so, uh, which is essentially what it would have been in I that know, context, right? So yeah. that's a huge thing yeah. for her to step out and right. no wonder she snuck up to him. Mm -hmm. And for the guy who works in the temple to be like, look, Jesus is controversial. Yeah. Yeah. Do I want to be seen having him at my house? Do I exactly. want to be seen walking the road with him? I know. Oh man, it's so, such risk. So there's, there's so much they share, yeah. but don't share because she's unnamed. He's a big deal. Yeah. Um, all of that and something you just prompted for me is just this idea we've been talking about for the last several passages is fear and faith yeah like mm -hmm. you know the disciples are afraid of Jesus and yet they trust him that the, the people with the pigs are like they're afraid of Jesus like push him away yeah these guys are afraid of Jesus they both yeah. Jairus is afraid of Jesus of going to him She's afraid of, but they, their faith overcomes, right? And that's, mm. that's always, yeah. you know, there is a fear no matter what end of the yeah. yeah. social status or economic status, there's always a fear. And oh. that's about faith, yeah. Well, now you got my mind going because I'm like, okay, wait. Okay, we do got to move on. To I know we got to move on, but hold on now. Uh, mm -hmm. At the beginning of Mark 5, mm -hmm. which, um, right, all the demons Jesus encounters, yeah. are they afraid of him? Oh, uh, we can edit this out. I'm just this is my yeah, curiosity yeah. because uh, well they fall well, they down on his feet. Yeah, they're fearful yeah. as in worship, right? So yeah, well yeah. they're both fearful. They they fall yeah. down on his yeah. feet, but they're also like, please don't send us right. right. 
some, nowhere. Like, send us yeah. into the pigs. Send us right? into the pigs, right? Even Don't though they're going to destroy us. the pigs. Which is, you know, which is the like, weirdest thing to I think know. about. Like, either yeah. way, it's it's a weird confrontation yeah. Yeah. because if they stood up to Jesus and were like, look, we, we don't care about you, yeah. then that's that's a weird contrast. But I, it does seem like they are respectful of his power and somewhat afraid too mm-hmm. because they understand he's not normal. Yeah, well, and, and what he tells them they have to do, right? Yeah. Like, can we go to the pigs, yeah. right? They understand yeah. he's God. Yeah. They do yeah. understand that, yeah. and yeah. that is clear. And that's scary to them. Yeah. 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 So there, yeah, anyway. the fear keeps going. Up. It keep, it's not. Yeah. It's not a uniquely uh, human thing, no. I guess. As yeah. Well, yeah. That we see in scripture. Yeah. Wow. But go on. Hey, we well, got other things. To talk uh, about. So, uh, anyways, I hope you're pondering this passage uh, with us and with others, um, and and come to God, like Sue said, like like talk to Him about it and about whatever you're dealing with. Um, Sue's here to give us an announcement, so uh, why don't you take it away, Sue? Okay, so you may have seen this um, in the bulletin. You may have seen a poster about Ladies Board Games Night. Uh, Friday, May 13th at 7 p.m. right here, well, right here in the fellowship room, we are going to have a fun ladies' night. So we're going to ask you to bring your favorite board game, um, your favorite mug for your hot drink, whether it's coffee, tea, hot water, hot chocolate, we'll have it, and, um, and a snack to share. And it's just about getting together. There's no program. It's just come, have fun, play games, and um, fellowship, yeah, right? That so great. we have done so little of this in the last couple I of years. Know. This is going to be a great yeah, night. Great. So you know what? Come one, come all. So, uh, so it's just, uh, not this Friday night, but it's the following Friday, Friday night. Okay. So Friday, May 13th. Yeah. And again, you can check the bulletin or, you know, church website, maybe. I'm not even sure if it's on there, but we can check. We'll, yep. we'll, we'll uh, have it. But uh, anyway, uh, Friday, May 13th, you can call me. You can call the office. Uh, we'll give you the details if you need it. But it's basically um, not this Friday, but the following Friday. And it'll be from 7 to 9 p.m. Nice. And we want to have some fun. That sounds, and, that sounds really fun. That sounds like a good yeah. time. Um, um, not that you have to use it, but in the youth room, we have like an eight foot by six foot twister board. If you'd like to, to try. <laughs> don't scare okay. them away. <laughs> okay, okay, I don't have to come okay, away, twister. Board games, <laughs> uh, tabletop games. Okay, I, I see where you're going. Twister sounds painful. I can handle pickleball, but twister, right. I don't know. Okay, okay. all right. But we just, I think board games are good. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's great. Oh, yeah, yeah there's some we want great fellowship, party. and it's yeah. pretty hard to fellowship if you can't get off the floor. Because yeah. once yeah. I'm down yeah. there, I'm probably good. Well, it does bring some laughs and some. Yeah, we don't, we don't need her to laugh. Like someone just looks at the knee yeah. or something. No, no, we do not need to get her yeah, to laugh. We just want to come and have fun oh, around yeah. the tables. That'd and uh, perfect. We invite every single one of you that, uh, yeah. yeah. That, so, uh, yeah, Friday the 13th. Right. Oh, Friday the 13th. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, you had oh, to bring that up. It's great. You know what? It's, it's all better. good. I, I am not superstitious at yeah. all. So, <laughs> um, no. <laughs> so, uh, thank you, Sue. So, yeah, make sure that you put that on your calendars. That yeah. sounds like a blast. Um, you had something yeah, to so share I brought, with us here too. I brought props because I love props. <laughs> yeah. uh, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, but we are uh, looking for backpacks for the food bank to distribute to families in our community for kids. Uh, who are going to be going back to school in the fall. And uh, um, we've been doing this as a project, as a church for like the whole time I've been here. So Mm -hmm. this is, this is 15 plus years. And, um, but often we've been guilty of um, kind of doing it quietly in the background, but we want, this is a church project and, and we know that many of you would love to be part of it if only you knew about it. So that's why we're trying to do it a little more publicly this year, not to pat ourselves on the back, but just so that more of you can get involved. And, uh, uh, one of the first ways to help is just by donating a nice backpack. I, 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 I don't think they have to be brand new, but I certainly think it's a lot nicer to get a new one than a used one. But if you find one that's barely been touched and it seems really perfect, then that would be fine too. We just want to be able to give kids, um, just start them off on the right foot with this new school year, which means a new backpack ready to go. And so um, one of the things that we also would love to encourage you towards is think about backpacks for the teenagers, because there are so many out there that are perfect for kids in elementary school. Like, for example, like I just brought two. Again, I said I brought props. So like, you know, this is a nice one. It's a nice size, but it's really an elementary school size. 
Uh, and if you just compare it to like something like this, that's just a lot bigger, um, it, it's just a little easier for kids in middle school and high school who have bigger binders, bigger textbooks, and a lot more stuff they're carrying around, and a bigger back to support it. Uh, that'd be great. So uh, we, we'd really appreciate it if you would donate a backpack and uh, help with that. And so what Can you're going to see, see yeah. absolutely, on Sunday morning, you're going to see this box and it's going to be in the foyer and uh, kind of over by the coat uh, rack area so it's not tripped over. Um, and uh, it'll be up all month of May uh, and into the first week or two of June. And so um, we'll, we'll uh, stuff these backpacks at the end of June and there'll be more details on that coming as to when that'll be happening if you'd like to come and help. Um, but uh, we have supplies like scissors and paper and binders to put in them and send them off to the food bank. And they like to get those at the beginning of July so that through the summer months, families that need them can collect them then and be ready for September. And so uh, into the first, yeah, all through May, first half of June, this will be in the foyer. And uh, if you could drop off a backpack for it, just that would be awesome. Yeah, invite you to join us in that. Awesome. So just for your, just to put your calendar things in order here to review Mother's Day this Sunday. Remember your mom. Um, uh, Friday the 13th, the games night. Uh, backpacks all through May and June. And we can't wait to see you Sunday. Have a great week.